Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, indeed, it's my great honor to be asked to speak to this uh, audience today. I'm a clinician coming from a, a lung health point of view. So uh, to start the scene, to start the, uh, the forum going, I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes or so just to briefly uh, discuss on the impact on health as far as air pollution is concerned. So this would be the, the, uh, the brief topic that I'd like to touch on uh, in the next uh, 15 minutes or so. First of all, uh, hot off the press was the publication by the Lancet Commissions, which published this uh, article uh, only about uh, uh, a month ago on pollution and health worldwide. And in the executive summary of this particular article, it said that diseases caused by pollution were responsible for an estimated 9 million, 9 million premature deaths in 2015, about 16% of all deaths worldwide. These were three times more than deaths from well-known diseases to all of us, such as AIDS, tuberculosis, um, and malaria combined. So this is a huge uh, number of premature deaths caused by various pollution, as uh, per this article. If you look at the breakdown of such nine million premature deaths, you would find that the majority, six and a half to seven million of these, were due to air pollution, both indoor as well as ambient air pollution effects. Of course, the other uh, causes of premature, de premature death, including water contamination, occupational hazards, and so on. And these figures, if you look at on the right-hand side here, between 20, uh, 2005 and 2015, the last 10 years, according to the, Inter in the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, the figures are very similar. So this has been a sustained increase in premature death caused by pollution for the last 10 years that we've been faced with. So WHO also uh, issued a similar kind of a paper four years ago, 2014, a few years ago, uh, mentioned that air pollution is now the world's largest single environmental health risk compared to what I mentioned before, water hazards, occupational hazards, and so on. So it's nothing to be sneezed at, and that's why we're here for today. Now, if we break down on the, um, the uh, uh, pollution-related death by disease category, we would find that about 40% were due to ischemic heart disease, heart attacks. Another 40% were due to stroke or cerebral vascular diseases. And these were likely to be caused by the small particulates, less than 2.5 microns diameter, which can travel all the way into the lower airways get through the capillaries in the lungs and into the bloodstreams. And these are highly pro-inflammatory particulars that can cause inflammation on the blood vessels wall in our hearts, as well as those in, in, in the, in the uh, uh, carotid arteries and, and other uh, brain arteries, causing narrowing of the arteries, that's why stroke and heart attack occurs. And the other 20% were caused by particulates that can lodge into the lungs and cause inflammation in the airway walls, in the lung tissues, causing uh, asthma, obstructive airway diseases, lung cancer, and various kinds of infection. That amounted to about 20%. So I'm a, a lung specialist, so I, I'm going to refer most of the, the talk on its impact on lung health. Now, that was the global scene. What about in Hong Kong? Now, the first uh, time series study that was done was about 20 years ago when I was working in Prince of Wales Hospital with Professor Wong, that um, we looked at a, a, series of a series of admissions to hospitals between the months of November to February in 1994 and 1995. Now, why that period of time? Because we know that from previous experience that air pollution tends to be worse in the winter months in Hong Kong, and that's why we have increased in hospital admission during those three months. And we found that there was definitely a, a very close association between the increase in exposure to various particulates and gases pollutants with the increase in cardiac and respiratory emission and subsequent death. Now, that was some 20 years ago. More recent figures from Hong Kong University here in 2013, it was estimated there were about 3,000 premature deaths in Hong Kong, partly related to uh, air pollution. That also amounted to about 150,000 hospitalization for pollution-related illnesses and a huge economic burden uh, on Hong Kong's uh, society. As of 2005, in Hong Kong, lung diseases, in fact, had 
has surpassed cardiovascular diseases as the most common cause of death in Hong Kong, as well as the most common cause of inpatient uh, uh, beds in Hong Kong. So 28.7% versus 26.1% of mortality were due to uh, heart, uh, lung uh, and heart disease respectively, and more patients coming to hospital for lung ailments, either due to pneumonia, COPD exacerbation, lung cancer, and so on. So in Hong Kong, lung disease indeed uh, cause a huge burden on our, uh, on our health economy. And if you break down on the, the causes of death, again, same, same study, about 11,000 deaths in 2005, we found that about 80% nearly were due to these three conditions, pneumonia, lung cancer, and COPD. And you recall it in the previous slides, that these were exactly the cause of death that could be partially uh, uh, caused by pollution. So it's a huge impact uh, as far as lung health is concerned uh, in Hong Kong. That could be relation, related to uh, air pollution exposure. Now, to look at different degree, a uh, different disease category, first of all, we did, let's touch on asthma, uh, which is a in, uh, research interest of mine. Same study that we did back in 20 years ago, looking at increase in exposure to various pollutants and how it impacts on emission and exacerbation of asthma in, in Hong Kong. We found that for each increase in 10 micrograms per, per meter cube of PM10, there was a parallel increase in respiratory emissions by 1.6%, asthma emissions by 1.5%, and accident, accident emergency attendances for acute asthma exacerbation uh, by 1%. One, 1 we found also that there, there were a lag time of about 24 to 40 hours after exposure, then we will see the increase in these emissions because it does take time for these particulates to lodge into the lungs, causing inflammatory response in the airways and then disease manifestation, so much so that the patient had to come into hospital or they had, they had to uh, be admitted. And uh, other studies a bit uh, earlier, looking at, again, a time series uh, uh, analysis, similar association were found in association with other gases uh, pollutants such as SO2, NO2, and so on. Now, as far as allergies are concerned, there are studies from the States, in particular from LA, that found that allergens can, can be adhered or absorbed onto the particulates, particularly diesel particulates, that can be inhaled together into the airways, and therefore the, uh, the, uh, the pollutants act as an adjuvant <coughs> to, to carry various kind of allergens, pollen, dust mite, and so on, into the lower airways and causing asthma, causing airway inflammation. What about in China? Now, this was a, a recent study looking at traffic-related air pollutants in Changsha, in, in China. They studied about 2,500 uh, school children aged between 9 and 10, uh, 3 to 6 years of age, and looking at three particular particulates, PM10, NO2, and SO2. It was found that these kids, if they were exposed to high levels of NO2 in utero, when they were still baby, a fetus inside mom's, mom's uh, 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 mother's uh, uterus, during the third trimester, there was already an increase of 1.4 times of odds of having allergic rhinitis or hay fever when they grew up at the age of three or six. And if they were exposed in the first year of life, shortly after birth, uh, by about 11 to 15 micrograms per meter cube increase in NO2 exposure, then the odds of having allergic rhinitis is increased by 34%. So that's very significant. That, that means the exposure to allergens could be important even uh, in the very early uh, uh, time of life. Allergen together with air pollution as a, as a conjugate. And likewise, for increased exposure to PM10, there was an increase odds of allergic rhinitis during the first year of life as well by 1.54 times. And in this particular study, it was found that kids who are male, who had a family history of atopy or allergy, they tend to be more prone and more likely to develop subsequent allergic rhinitis. Now, lung cancer's association with air pollution is slightly more elusive. There are too many confounding factors, in particular smoking. Uh, smoking is a very important cause of indoor air pollution, as you all of you know. So individual susceptibility is very important. But, like, but having said that, though, <coughs> there have been studies showing that uh, diesel particulates and sulfates uh, increase exposure of those 
chemicals uh, that have been an association, at least epidemiologically speaking, of increased mortality risk or development of lung cancer uh, in these people. Now, in children, we are particularly more, um, more careful about air pollution or, or we, we want to stress that children are more vulnerable to the effects of air pollution for various reasons. As you know, that they have a shorter airways, so it takes a shorter time for particulates to, to, to precipitate in the lower airways causing problems. They spend a lot of time outdoor, they run around, they play outdoor, uh, do exercise and so on. So they have increased exposure time to ambient air pollution than many of us sitting like us in the room, indoor, we don't get outside all the time. And the observed effects that have been, been found in various studies include increased symptoms uh, uh, such as cough, wheeze, sputum production, or itchy eyes, uh, sneezing, runny nose, just respiratory symptoms short of diseases, or indeed disease exacerbations such as asthma that require going to hospital, and therefore increased school absenteeism is a big problem in, in, in certain population. And more importantly, I'd like to draw attention to decrease in lung function. So these kids are still growing up, and, and our lung function is at its best when they're 20 years of age. From then on, it, it, it only goes downhill. So if you start off with a low lung function because of exposure to pollution as a child, you can imagine when they grow up, they end up with a weak lung as an adult, and that's irreversible. So now, <coughs> um, early study that uh, had been done in Hong Kong uh, was looking at respiratory symptoms uh, in various parts of Hong Kong, in particular, a very industrialized district called Kuai Ching uh, versus southern district uh, Lam Khoi, which is a, more, uh, uh, a nicer area with, le with less uh, pollution. And it was found that kids who, who go to school, uh, went to school in the industrialized district, they had higher uh, uh, prevalence of sore throat, wheeze and cough, they had to go into hospital, they go to see doctors more frequently, and the areas are more responsive to various irritants. That means they're more likely to develop asthma as they grow up. And in China, a uh, more recent study looking at a large number of school children aged between 3 to 12 years, it was found that in the six different districts of Liaoning, in, 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 in the, the northern east, northeastern part of China, that there were an increase in persistent cough, phlegm production, and asthma uh, if they were exposed uh, to these pollutants or if they lived in the polluted area. And likewise, in, in the States, the very famous six cities study from Harvard also showed increase in various respiratory symptoms in children who lived in more polluted area compared to more rural uh, uh, dwellings. Now, yeah, I alluded to this before, lung growth is very important. And a very nice study was done in China uh, looking at kids uh, uh, grade three to four, that means they were about nine to 10 years of age, uh, about nearly 2,000 of them, they followed them for six months in, in about 10 years ago. It was found that if they were exposed to these particulates and gases, ambient gases, pollutants, that they were reduced in growth rate in FEV1, which is a measurement of large and small airways lung function, as well as FEV2575, this is a measurement of small airways. I mentioned before, small particulates can lost into lower airways, and large particulates, about five microns or so, lost in the large airway. And, and that can affect both boys and girls <coughs> in this particular study. And more importantly, the development of everyone, the growth of everyone with life was, was a negative associated with air pollution level. And another study come from South uh, California in the States, similar study, uh, uh, 10 years to 18 years, a much longer follow-up of about 1,800 uh, school children back in 2004, uh, reduced growth rate were again associated <coughs> with the exposure to particulates, NO2, and acid vapor, and so on. So as I mentioned before, if, if you start off with a, a lower lung function as a child, then when you grow up, you, you're going to end up with a weak lung. And that's something irreversible uh, ir uh, after you have grown up. So now, it wasn't that long ago that Hong Kong had one of the worst <laughs> air quality in the world in this uh, 1998 study that among 36 major cities, Hong Kong was ranked 9 and 15, 15 for worst RSP and NO2. And uh, at that time, about 80% of, of, uh, of mileage on the roads were diesels driven. Things have, got, uh, done, uh, <laughs> have come a long way because of the hard work by Dr. Uh, Peter Louis here and, and our, our colleagues here from UST driving the development of better air quality that we have seen a very welcome drop in both ambient and roadside uh, uh, levels of various pollutants here. And likewise, uh, for the last 10 years in the in the PRD, we also seen a very nice drop in, in uh, such levels. Just showing you this graphically, 
that the uh, and NOx would drop by 29% uh, in ambient measurement and 50% on the roadside measurement over the last <coughs> uh, 15 years or so in Hong Kong. And uh, from 1999 to 2015, PM2.5 dropped by 24%. Uh, uh, ambient levels and roadside levels were about great 44 percent here in red. And in PRD, likewise, BM10 had dropped by 34 uh, percent over the last 10 years, and NO2 had also dropped by 28 percent. So that's all very well to say that there is a definite drop in in uh, uh, pollutant levels in in for example in the Chinese area in, in China uh, over the last 10 years by 23 percent. But there have been a parallel increase in ambient PM2.5 by 20% in the central and western provinces. So basically, we see in a shift of pollutant uh, materials from the eastern coast, where all the development used to be 10, 15 years ago, to the middle part of China, now to the western part of China, particularly one by one road development in the next 10 years. You can imagine that's going to be a, a major shift of pollutant uh, 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 epidemiology. And now, so much so, the six out of the ten most polluted cities, where are they? They are no longer in Ten, uh, Tianjin, they are no longer in Beijing. They are now in Xinjiang, way west. So that's going to become worse, as more, more and more of these uh, heavy industries are going to shift to the left side. So with that shift in, in, in pollutant levels, will we see a parallel decrease or change in epidemiology in its health effects, in asthma, in allergy? Big question mark. That begs for more study more investigation, whether this is a healthy development or not. So with that, I would like to close, and we invite the other speaker to tell us how we should address this issue. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. <laughs>